It has been said that if whites and non-whites were two teams competing psychologically on American turf, whites would have the home field advantage. All 40 presidents on this American turf have been white. Some appearing on the currency of exchange, some of whom were even slave owners. The popular depiction of Jesus Christ is that of a long-haired white man, a deliberate creation systematically distributed throughout the world for the sole purpose of reinforcing and preserving the white supremacist mentality out of which it evolved. America has declared a psychological war against her non-white citizens. These Brilliant are the classic you. representations you are of human Vanderbilt. beauty. The fragrance created by Gloria Vanderbilt. A concept of beauty originating out of European aristocracies. an ethnic interpretation of beauty that has vainly permeated its way into the conscience of mainstream society. A concept of beauty that is perpetually reinforced through the power of media who, being in control of the images, have complete control of the definitions as well. Paulina, says her agency, has set an industry standard for exquisite skin, hair, form. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Like a hammer pounding and pounding into the subconscious, pictures and words of white beauty are reinforced by the minute. A relentless onslaught of white external symbols, conditioning, shaping, and influencing the general perception of beauty throughout nations. How do I look? Ginger, believe me, you look like the Venus de Milo with arms. <laughs> Her beautiful hair. Waterproof mascara. Imposing images, possessing the potential of psychologically reducing the self-worth of those who do not meet these racial standards of external beauty. The theory of beauty being in the eyes of the beholder is never considered in media. In reality, it is television, billboards, videos, etc. that is doing much of the beholding and defining of beauty. In order for one to develop a particular attitude about a person, place, or thing, he or she has to have a teaching an orientation of the mind. The general teaching is that a person's nose or lips must be shaped a certain way. A person's eyes must be a certain color or hair a certain length or color to be classified as beautiful. the bold and the beautiful. This kind of orientation has had a psychological impact on almost everyone. You're so fine, I couldn't even get it out. You know, I looked at the cue cards and I was like, hey, she, she's a perfect hang, hang, hang. Now, is it hard to be Brooke Shields? I mean, you know, it's easy to be ugly. All you got to do is just try to stay alive. You know, I, I just try to wake up, you know. I see, the strange thing is, being the most beautiful woman in the world, you would think that men are just knocking down your door. We are living contradictions. We know that what is truly important about us is our intelligence, our spirit, our soul. And yet we tend to judge one another and ourselves by our external appearance. One of our most durable legends is of an incredibly handsome young man who was so bewitched by his own reflection in a pool of water that he drowned pursuing himself. His name? Narcissus. I think narcissism is 
making everyone else feel as if you think that you were... It is obvious that America is bewitched over such so-called beauty symbols as blonde hair, blue eyes, gorgeous brunettes, and radiant redheads. However, the African-American women that are labeled as beautiful primarily are those who are fair-skinned, keen-featured, basically the ones closer to the white idea. I think you look very pretty. Thank you. really incidental that I was attractive and to have a bunch of men telling me I'm beautiful really doesn't mean anything anyway. Well, if you were half as fine then as you are now, I know in your mind you knew you won every year. (laughs) 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 Absolutely. From a different world, Jasmine Guy. The image controllers not only define beauty, but practically anything can be defined. This is what dry is. Even Elvis can be defined as the king. Don't be cool. Now you can own the king's historic comeback performance. Elvis is capable of being anything the media desires. Fortunately, there are those of us that understand the inner workings of media hype. Because most of what's called white is an imitation of something that was called black a long time ago. And that's how it always has been. You listen to Bird playing with Jay McShann in the 1940s, in 1956 or 1957, that's Elvis. But it doesn't matter what it is musically because Elvis means white in terms of the music industry. Do you see what I'm saying? Glenn Miller can even be defined as the king of swing. Kind of music. He followed his dream and made America swing. James Stewart and June Allison. The true story of a man and his music. The Glenn Miller story. But there is no greater example of the vanity and insensitivity of the image controllers than the promotion of universal icons of a Caucasian Jesus. This classic depiction of Jesus Christ has left behind devastating psychological scars in the souls of non-whites. When the images that one sees daily are controlled, attitudes will also be controlled and will eventually harden into beliefs. When an African-American boy or girl is subjected culturally to Jesus' reflecting a race other than their own, it starts them on a subconscious path toward a desire to be accepted by that particular race. That race is perceived as God's race. When little African-American boys and girls see Jesus Christ as a race other than their own, it almost guarantees a feeling of inferiority. The conclusion being that God must be white and the media becomes a great reinforcer of that belief. The three Marys are white. She was very beautiful, wasn't she? This woman of Egypt who left her scar upon your heart. Sephira with Moses describing beauty. Her skin was white as curd. Like the breast of a dove, her arms were soft. Yes, she was beautiful. White biblical images are exposed exclusively in the media, and Nefertiri can be white of ancient black Egypt. I, Nefertiri, queen of Egypt. Pharaoh and all his army are made white. A white beard on a white Moses symbolizing purity. A subliminal message subtly implying a color connection somehow with God. The light of God shines from you, Moses. Adam, the first man on earth being depicted as a white man. Eve, as a white woman, and the subtle implication concerning the image of God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. 
male and female, created he them. Noah. A subliminal message is one that falls below the threshold of consciousness. In the beginning, there was man and there was woman. What? In the beginning, notice the two white babies, a subliminal message implicating whites to be the origin of humankind. In the beginning, people had problems. And... Again, the same pattern with subtle implications. To preserve a white supremacist mentality, it is quite necessary for the image controllers to project whites as beautiful, benevolent, and the beginning of humankind. White, even in dictionaries, means the exact opposite of the word black, which is described as hostile, gloomy, wicked, angry, evil, threatening, bad. When you judge human beings according to the color of their skins, you do not only end up subjecting them to physical hardship, you also cripple them psychologically. If the color black is generally perceived to possess such negative qualities, then why would one perceive a person who is physically black any differently? In ancient Africa, the eternal badge of honor was the blackness of one's skin. It was considered a blessing. The general feeling toward one's blackness was the exact opposite of the present day concept. The arrival of the Europeans meant not only the doom of many great kingdoms of Africa, but a complete conceptual transformation took place. Defining power thus became the conquerors, and the concept of color remains to this present day. Anything white was declared right. The good guys now wore white, and the bad guys were to wear black. They'll be around for a long time. European culture, concepts, ideologies now encompass practically all facets of our society. It's the essence of romance and leaves me vulnerable. Is this romantic or what? Europe, defined as the place where love and intimacy was born, especially Rome, the home of Cupid, the Roman god of love, and France, perceived to be the hub of passion and intimacy. When expressing passionate feelings of love, it is attributed to the Roman. It's being romantic. Open, emotional kisses are attributed to the French. It's called French kissing. By the bold and the beautiful. Europe. When romance blossoms, associated with all that is positive, a bombardment of Europe across the airwaves. Lulu, is it you? Oui, c'est moi. Lulu, the Jedivien. This French psychologist has had a great influence on America's educational system. The ultimate French seduction. The Jardin d'Amour is the fragrance that inspires his love. Something special to Europe. Rich French roast coffee. We can't give you France, but we'll give you the flavor. Oula, 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 oula. Paris in your pocket. Being neutral, the Swiss enjoy the best of all worlds. Cars from Italy. Clothes from Paris. Shoes from England. After all, nothing's more important to the Swiss than good relations. I want a little sugar in my bowl. Like most Frenchmen. A European friend said to me, love advice from around the world. West Germany. Italy, Italy, Italy. Sweden, Sweden, Turkey. This constant orientation has shaped the general perception of Europe, European values and lifestyles, but African contributions and realities in America, unfortunately, are omitted. I mean, because would you rather have someone talking into your ear like this, or would you like them to say, hey, baby, I'd like you to come over here? <laughs> Scandinavian countries who you know have the secrets to the best love lives, so we've heard.
bells will ring, tingle, lingle, lingle. The most romantic places in the world. If you've been there, you've probably been in love. We are in Amsterdam. We European design. Oh, my husband's family's from Sicily. Entrepay, France. Gestad, Switzerland. Bali, Indonesia. Wow. The category, of course, is Europe. In a moment, I'll give you the... Not only will persistent reference to and acknowledgement of Europe certainly develop racial pride in many white adults, but it ensures racial pride in white children as well. But inducing racial pride in African-American children has never been much of a priority. Children, too, are taught early about the societal standards of beauty. Notice the subliminal message in a white horse with blonde we're hair. We're into horses. That's why we're into blinking beauty. So is Barbie. Blinking beauty blinks when you stroke a pretty mane. Pink shoes for her feet, and she's sweet and tame. Blonde and red-haired dolls are characterized as the epitome of beauty in dolls. Children ads as well as home blonde shopping hair. clubs bear well, of witness to this. strawberry blonde, it's really rich. It's like a golden blonde. And look at those little eyes on this beauty. For centuries, little African-American girls have cuddled and embraced white blue-eyed doll babies. The perpetual reinforcement of beauty in white dolls has helped to cripple young African-American girls psychologically and plant in their minds inferior seeds that affect generations. The superior beauty in blonde and red-haired dolls with blue eyes are not only evident in their popularity, but also by the familiar words used to describe them. It is quite common to see pairs of white male and female dolls. With this beautiful hand-painted porcelain face, these beautiful eyes are European hand-blown and hand-threaded glass eyes. This soft auburn hair trimmed with ribbons. Look at, look at her hair. You have to get a look at all of this cascading ringlet hair. Even Alf knows that blondes have more fun. More inferior seeds are planted in the minds of African American children when a white man is projected to be the king of the jungle in Africa. The jungle strong as he can be. Ah! Watch out for that tree. When he gets in the scrape, he makes his escape with the help of his friend, an ATP. Then away he'll slap on his elephant ship while Bella and Ursula stay in step. Where George, George, George of the jungle friend to you. There is no inferiority complex for African Americans, however, when it comes to athletics. The image controllers usually project whites as the brains and beauty of society, while African Americans are put under the microscope for their athletic prowess. The general admiration that white America has towards black America has fundamentally remained the same since the country's conception. Many fail to realize the strong similarities between today's black athletes and yesterday's black slaves. They each were admired for their physical ability. Since the birth of television, young African American children have never been granted the privilege of being exposed regularly to any kind of parental guidance, unlike their white counterparts. Have you excused? Hey, Jill. Yes, we're here. Don't forget your lunches. Whether it be in sitcoms or cartoons, the perfect family is always exemplified in white families. Oh, thanks, Daddy, but I don't need one anymore. You don't? No. Rocky and I... Well, what do you know? I got out of this mess without having to spend a dime. Honey, before you jump to any conclusions, maybe you should listen to your disaphone messages. Jetson, you're fired! Remember the fun you was having this morning galloping around the backyard on, on Blackie? 
Parental guidance was even exhibited in non-traditional family settings. Though the image of Fred Flintstone was a loud mouthed and rather obnoxious person, he was still projected as a loving and caring father. And let's not forget the honorable Mr. Brady, who at first not only supported his own three children, but took on three more golden haired children, plus a wife, a maid, and a dog. When parental guidance is exhibited toward young, intelligent African-American children, it's often attributed to some form of Caucasian influence. I even study things that the teacher didn't even ask. Go ahead, ask me anything. Okay, let's see how much you really know. Now, where did they sign the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> Richie Rich an inappropriate and tasteless cartoon about an extremely wealthy white boy. A prime example of how the image controllers influence one's self-worth and racial esteem. In this degrading episode, an inferior seed is planted in the minds of African American youth as Richie Rich takes a trip to Africa and journeys through his own private safari. Wow, we A zillion animals in your own private jungle! Adding to insult, the young white boy is shown having mastership over an African man. Manharo here. Hello, Richie. If you're calling about the new animal preserve, I've got bad news. We found gold on your East African property and diamonds on your West African property. Oh, no. With gold... The young white boy wields his power over his faithful overseer. Property. Impossible. That's Mystery Mountain. These have mysteriously stolen almost every animal from the area. It's no place for a preserve. It's the only, only he has the power to solve this problem in Africa. And I'm going to solve the mystery of Mystery Mountain. The story continues with a realistic scenario of whites feuding over the control of Africa. My plan! Mechanical vulture will teach that rich brat he's no match for the great Barnum Bullwhip. <laughs> Notice the subliminal connotations and the irony of animals being programmed to build up the fortress of Africa in the exact manner black slaves were used to build up the fortress of white America. We'll have you helping to build my fortress. Join my workforce, beast. Lift those logs. Soon my hypnotized creatures will complete my impregnable fortress and my laser ray will enable me to control all Africa! <laughs> We've got to unhypnotize those animals and stop Bullwhip! How do we get past Mr. Bullwhip? And thanks to a white boy, all of Africa is saved. Two giraffes, two zebras. Thanks to you, Richie, we have the best wild animal preserve in all Africa. Speaking of wild animals, where's Dollar? Oh. Stop bugging me. Television not only creates injustices by showing white boys having authority over black men, but it also creates friendly relationships between white and black adults. Coming, coming. Can't rush perfection. I'm counting on you, honey. Don't let me down. So I have to check my own schedule. Black men and white men getting along. Who other than yourself would have access to my files? Shown are white men and black women involved in friendly conversations. Social gatherings among blacks and whites. Blacks and whites in professional fields together, showing concern for each other. Trying to steal focus again. There are easier ways, you know. Yeah, there you go. Tell them about the baby. I cannot lose this Listen, baby. Honey, honey, you've got the best people looking out for you. I am not talking about the most romantic lunch I've ever had. I'll remember it for as long as I live. You know, now that I've met Tony, 
Now that's the kind of man I'm gonna marry. Oh, me too. Blacks and whites dreaming together as teenagers. I'm only a substitute teacher. Well, then how will we marry? Guess who? <laughs> the P I got from Trend. Glog. Glog. Seen regularly are all possible combinations of black and white relations. All that is, except for black men pursuing white women for intimate relations. The reverse, however, is quite common. To be getting involved in this holiday, but now I am just all caught up in it. Wow, look at the tree! Ooh. You are a wonderful doctor and an even better friend. I'm praying too. Look, you are. Take a couple minutes, okay? There is, though, a tolerance toward black men fondling white women, but far too often in this fashion. The notion of black men intimately embracing white women is obviously still considered taboo. You, well, you're a real pal. Thanks a lot for bringing me here. America has clearly proven that it is more tolerant for a white woman to embrace a beast. part of who I am, that whatever happens now, Vincent, we will endure. Television not only helps to condition one's ethnic perceptions, but there is also something called classical mind conditioning. It was a Russian physiologist named Ivan Pavlov who accidentally discovered classical mind conditioning by surgically implanting tubes inside the cheeks of dogs so that saliva could be drained and precisely measured for digestive investigation. He noticed that every time the attendant who usually fed the dogs came in the dog's presence, the dogs would begin to salivate. The dogs, through classical conditioning, had learned to associate the attendant with food in the same manner a person is conditioned to associate these once meaningful songs with advertising products. What do you think of when you hear? The creation of psychological wars is quite clear. Its intention was to enlighten. Enlighten not only African Americans, but all races of people. It is not suggesting that there should be a redefining of beauty or a creation of a black Superman or black Batman or that there needs to be a reversal of interracial love scenes. There is a need, however, for a psychological investigation, a call for the removal of every barrier 
every psychological impediment that stops one from a full and complete development of themselves to the fullest qualities and capabilities that they are able to reach. And it is the mental and psychological barriers and impediments that we are exposed to daily on television and in other forms of media that there should be a commitment in dissolving.